Hello, Bob. Guess where I'm going to Disneyland? I'm on my way to Disneyland. This is the great land ever. Because we're going down to Disneyland for this reason. To learn how to be expressive to others with your mask on. Because people in Disney, that wonderful cast, have been delighting visitors. Millions of visitors per year. Showing expression without showing your mouth. Now watch this. It, it, it's just like stage acting. You can't... That, in, in, in film, you do very, very subtle motions and they pick up. However, it's more like stage acting. You have to be very, very expressive. So watch how I smile. There, this is what you have to do. If you want to let people know that you're happy, just make like a Disney character. <laughs> I can't wait! crisis. What do I think about when I think about pandemic crisis? I think about Jesus, babes, and son. And here I am down in sunny Florida having a wonderful time. Uh, uh, remember, uh, did you say vaccinated? I thought you said Disney vacation. We are uh, fresh back from CPAC uncanceled. And unfortunately, we missed the Magic Kingdom because you actually have to purchase your tickets and make reservations in advance. So let us into the wise be sufficient. If Florida is in your travel plans before the pandemic is over, and I hope it is, uh, which could take a while, uh, keep that in mind. But overall, CPAC was revealing regarding the Republican Party nationally, which technically is distinct from the conservative movement, regardless of what you may hear in the press. The main issue in the 2020 election was COVID-19, and the pandemic crisis response. And until such time as it is over, or declared over, that shall remain the predominant issue that will affect the economy, our schools, our churches, our religious freedom, and everything else. But after about an hour touring the convention center site for the event, it became very clear that Republicans have absolutely no plan or idea about how to address COVID-19. As it was not a topic on the agenda, even if it was the elephant in the room, undiscussed by folks wearing masks and socially distanced and taking temperatures and meeting in Florida because of what was popularly termed as the pandemic. And even here in Virginia, we have had vocal anti-maskers like Amanda Chase who have screamed about protecting liberties, which are important, but make no sense if you have no idea about the characteristics of the pathogen or disease that you're confronting, or even the efficacy or inefficacy of the masks that have been mandated by law. It's reckless and it's dangerous, and I don't do that. But uh, she was also calling for the unconstitutional martial law to be imposed, so go figure. So I spent my time rather enjoying a much deserved vacation from politics in sunny Florida. And what normal person would go all the way to Florida sunny Florida in the middle of winter to be stuck inside a convention hall to listen to some speech saying something that you already knew or that reinforced what you already believed. And thanks to the Navy Exchange facility out by the Orlando Airport, we got the chance to grab a discount military ticket from Universal Studios. And that's something you need to remember if you are a veteran and find yourself on a vacation in sunny Florida. Another location is the military resort on the uh, Disney property, Shades of Green. And if you love riding roller coasters, eating amusement park food, and enjoying 3D adventure rides in pandemic Florida, even a lot of hotel prices are low, and the parks have a limit on maximum capacity, so it's almost like a private amusement park party without waiting hours on line. And if you can get used to the constant reassuring voices over the loudspeakers about safety and social distance, the reminders about how your goggles have been sanitized, and the dab of 
hand sanitizers you get for boarding in your ride to give you insurance. As, as you have fun with a mask on, you can't remove unless you are actively eating. I highly recommend it because if you actually understand COVID-19, the chances of getting infected at an amusement park are practically zero unless you plan to be stuck in a tight closed space for at least an hour. Uh, and, 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 and then uh, only <laughs> because someone basically deployed it. But also we had a chance to do some thinking about the road ahead for the campaign for governor of Virginia, a long shot as an independent from the start. But we got into this race because of litigation on COVID-19, continue in litigation on COVID-19, the only surviving litigation on COVID-19, and that priority enables us to better understand the available choices for this unique pandemic campaign to take. As we stated before CPAC, we are filing a petition for rid of mandamus with the Fourth Circuit to compel the federal district court in Richmond to convene a mandatory grand jury required under federal rule of criminal procedure six because of the decisions of Governor Northern Mark Herring and Arlington County to obey the United States Marshal in the service of a summons. A felony punishment fold by up to 20 years in prison. That has some conspiracy to violate civil rights, felonious conduct, and pattern of racketeering activity included, which will at least put on record uh, what has not been published in the news nor addressed by the Republican Party. For many of us, adventure in life is like riding on an action ride in an amusement park, watching the 3D action coming at you while the ride goes down the program tracks and returns you safely to the exit area. But in pandemic, we decided to jump out the car and uh, upset park security. And it uh, turns out the progressives like Ralph Northam and Mark Herring expected everyone to stay inside the car, follow the instructions of the park cast members, because we found some glaring problems that we shall now be filing with the United States Supreme Court, seeking certiorari uh, like the Archdiocese of New York had done in their case. It was being decided uh, by the Circuit Court on Religious Freedom. And our issues are very simple regarding abuses of discretion, the assignments of error that are raised in appellate briefs, like ones going to the Supreme Court. Our first issue is whether under the controlling statute that was recited by Governor Northam, VA Code Section 44-146.17, a declaration of a communicable disease of public health threat, which the order confirmed was on February 7, 2020, was done in abuse of discretion because the communicable disease of public health threat, COVID-19, did not exist in any defined affected area as required by the statute until the first laboratory confirmed case on March 7, 2020, one month later. This finding is like the infections of sailors that were recorded in handwritten notes by Captain Brett Crozier aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt for his sailors, despite the fact that uh, his handwritten notes are dated one month after he was fired, which even logically should not have occurred. Our other issue concerns whether Ralph Northam, a licensed doctor and former Army surgeon, had abused his discretion by accepting the pandemic declaration of the World Health Organization, but rejecting their conclusions as validated by every credible large sample size patient contact study thereafter that found a less than 5% infectious pathogen, which by science is not statistically significant enough to be described as an infectious disease being transmitted from person to person because it is four times too low. This shift in litigation strategy will alter our campaign a bit, as we shall not be seeking petition signatures even appear on the ballot, but rather running a write-in campaign in a single-issue campaign about COVID-19, for which Republicans have no plan at all, and for which Democrats plan to continue what has already been done. So you can expect more masks, more stay-at-home orders, uh, more vaccines, more of the same. If your loyalty is to party in a pandemic that has been attributed to the deaths of over half a million Americans, you're probably not our voter anyway. If you don't, if you haven't done the uh, homework to become informed about this past year and over a year, you probably will not do the homework for the next election. You also, probably are not our voter, and I'm perfectly good with that. But for those who are fed up with the pandemic badness that has become America, we not only ask you to vote by writing in but also to make a commitment to reach out to like-minded people that you know to help us reverse a very bad thing that has changed any concept of what had been the American way of life. We're asking you to jump out that adventure ride car with us and uh, change the program. 
This really is a people's campaign and it is about you. We may be setting up a donation account for legal fees, but we will not be raising any donations or trying to meet any contribution deadlines in this race because the money in politics is one of the reasons why we are in the problems we face right now, with some benefiting greatly and others scared to fight back, while others, maybe even yourself, are a little bit scared of you and in despair. But it is an important step to returning to an America like the one that those with our values remember and want for our children and the future generations. And that investment is ours and ours to make alone. But oh, what an adventure it will be too. My name is Major Mike Webb, retired Army Ranger and former operations officer for all Army Counter Strategic Counterintelligence in the continental United States. And by God, I am running for Governor of Virginia. For two decades, I served my nation in uniformed service under a solemn oath, so help me God, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States from all enemies, foreign and domestic, an oath to which I remain obligated until such time that I may choose to resign that commission. So I ask every Virginian and every American true to like the motto of the infantry, follow me, and we shall overcome, honest. And y'all come back now, yeah. This advertisement was authorized by Mike Webb. And y'all go back now. Here. Yeah.